Good morning. Um, just want to thank a few of our sponsors, obviously BCA Music Committee and uh, all the work of Kemi Nakabayashi, um, and also the CBE Center for Buddhist Education, Koichi Mizushima and Jiu Kono there, and our other sponsor, Taiko Ventures. Uh, it's an exciting new um, program. If you guys haven't learned about it, you should check it out, uh, really supporting the, the Taiko economy. So um, excited today. Today we're going to learn, we're going to meet Bombu Stories, for those of you who don't know Bombu Stories. Then they're going to share the song and kind of some of the process that went into it. And finally, we're going to learn the new dance. So if everybody would please join me in Gashō. Hands together. Namo mi dabutsu. Namo mi dabutsu. Namo mi dabutsu. Namman dabutsu. Namman dabutsu. Namman dabutsu. Okay, now we can get started. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, we are so excited today to present this webinar for all of you. Uh, we're going to open our first segment, learn a little bit more about Bobu stories with this video. Bombu Stories is an Asian American arts collaborative dedicated to using music as a medium for raw storytelling and building connections. My name is Sydney Shirayama, and I, along with Miharu Okamura, Miko Shudo, Kendall Tani, Emily Imazumi, and Vicky Zhang, gathered under the mentorship of PJ Hirabayashi from Taiko Peace and Chris and Dan Kubo after being asked to create a piece reflecting the intersections of Asian American identity culture, art, and mental health. We created our first collaborative piece entitled Ways of Being at the residence of Chris and Dan Kubo in Cortez, California on indigenous Tachi Yokut land. Ways of Being incorporates taiko, movement, voice, guitar, violin, koto, and spoken word. This collaboration was inspired by Kendall Tani's original spoken word piece and its raw depiction of depression and suicide. The piece's instrumentation is a fusion of our musical and artistic backgrounds and life experiences. Through the process of creating and sharing ways of being, the six of us are inspired to continue to create art together. Drawing from our individual identities and shared Asian American culture, we strive to share the beautifully raw, honest, broken, emotional, and whole experiences and stories of us as Bombus. Bombu is a Buddhist term meaning ordinary, imperfect, or unenlightened being. This term carries with it a sense of compassion and acceptance for human life and our flaws, mistakes, and potential for growth. Bombu's story centers its work and creative process around this definition, believing in the power and value of vulnerability, authenticity, and interconnectedness. It's much better with you. So the first question again, why did you guys decide to start this collective and start working together? Okay, I'll answer that question. Um, yeah, again, he hello, my name is Sydney. Um, so we, we originally formed because um, a friend of mine uh, who works in mental health, uh, we were chatting and we were talking about Tycho. And um, I think we were, I was telling her how I feel like, um, you know, as a Tycho player and as someone who's like played in different, different compositions, um, I felt that that Tycho has a lot of room to express um, things other than like thunderstorms and like you know um, war and stuff like that. Like um, there's kind of similar narratives a lot in the in the Tycho uh, community, and so I thought that you know um, that there could be more storytelling around like mental health and uh, um, kind of relatable stories. And so she kind of challenged me on that, and she said, "Well, you know, she's a, a part of a mental health organization." And she asked me to, to come up with something, you know, and um, I couldn't. I was like, no, I, I don't have the skills to do that. But I do have friends that um, I can call upon and bring together who might be interested in this. Um, and I feel like that really kind of set, is uh, like a pattern in how we work is that, um, you know, if we can't do it together, we have um, a community and a network of people we can ask for help. And that's kind of been like how we've operated so far. So that was back in um, April 2019, where we first gathered together. And, um, you know, to everyone's credit here, like they didn't all know each other, but I knew them. And so they really put a lot of trust into me and to uh, into gathering and like agreeing to work on this together. Um, and, you know, I didn't know what it was going to be like, you know, like uh, I, I believed so much in all of them. And um, but I never seen them all work together. And 
um, I had experience working or being at uh, Chris and Dan Kubo's um, residence in Cortez, California, and um, I had gone to a retreat with PJ Hirabayashi there. So I knew what a magical place it was and how supportive they are and how like it just felt like home as soon as I walked in and I ate, you know, the all the food like the like, uh, you know, like Tijiki salad, and, you know, all this like like real J.A. food. Uh, and so, you know, I asked them if we could use their their place and we gathered together and we had like a weekend to create something and we did. And um, and from that, um, the group. Uh, we each decided that we wanted to continue working together. We thought that that was a really great experience. Um, I think Kendall will talk a little later about like things that we've done together, but that really is, is how it began. It was like basically um, an ask uh, of the group. Wow, what a beautiful story. So you guys didn't really know each other beforehand, but Sydney kind of looped everybody <laughs> together to work together. That's awesome. Um, I have to say, I really love kind of like the community aspect of your group and how you kind of bring these issues to the forefront. Um, we want to definitely take some time now and learn a little bit more about each of the members of Bombu Stories. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and give folks an opportunity to introduce themselves. So one moment while I share. So this is a group picture of everybody all together. Did you want to say anything about the photo or are we good? Um, yeah, that, that photo was taken um, outside of uh, Senshin. This was back in, oh gosh, a couple months ago. Uh, we gathered to, to film uh, Lantern Song and yeah, so that was there. Adorable. So let's look at our individual members. Let's start with you both. Hi, can everyone hear me? Okay, cool. I'm just having all these technical difficulties today, but it's real life. thank you all for coming. It's 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 life, right? Um, thanks everyone for coming. My name is Miko. Um, I grew up going to Oxnard Buddhist Temple. I'm currently located in Pasadena. Um, I do music pretty much full time. I uh, I teach um, small children how to play instruments and. Um, I do performances like in the LA, Los Angeles area. Um, things that I've been loving lately are like salsa dancing, making art on um, this app called Procreate, like digital art. Um, I enjoy meditating. I don't, I feel like I do it enough, but I, I do love meditation. I, re I like reading books on mindfulness and um yeah, you can find like my music and stuff on, on Instagram or on YouTube. I kind of have like the little links on, on the slide if you want to check it out. But uh, I'm just so grateful to, to be a part of this project and um, to be making uh, a really special song and dance with some of my best friends. So yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks, Nico. And also as we're going through these, uh, if you all have any questions specifically for any particular member, please feel free to put them in the chat as well. We'll keep track of those. Let's go to the next person, Sydney. Okay. Hi again, everyone. Uh, my name is Sydney. Um, I grew up going to the Palo Alto Buddhist Temple. That's where I started playing taiko with the um, Dharma School Taiko group. Um, my original teacher was Reverend Hiroshi Abiko. Um, I'm a minister's assistant at, at the Palo Alto Temple. Um, I did the Yak Retreat in year three, 2007, and, I, and that was kind of... Um, I've been really involved in BCA youth organizations since then. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Yonsei. My mom's side of the family is from Hanford Buddhist Church. And then my stepdad, Keiju, <laughs> is a president at Oakland Buddhist Temple. Um, I'm an IBS uh, student. It's in Institute of Buddhist Studies. Um, and I'm completing my master's in Shin Buddhist Studies at the moment. Um, I've studied occupational therapy and um, worked in a few years in pediatrics. Um, and Right now, I'm doing some projects with inclusive taiko, so um, working, uh, bringing taiko into a special education classroom at a high school, as well as uh, with the Down syndrome community, um, and with Parkinson's and older adults um, online. Uh, so these are a couple of links um, if you're interested in that. Uh, specifically, the the ones with Parkinson's is rhythmic flow taiko, and there's an ongoing class on Sundays that are taught by some of my friends because it's uh, during church, and so it's uh, Sundays, I think, at 11. Um, 
And yeah, just another like quick uh, plug is that um, I am working with Blake Honda and some of my other friends uh, to put together a Skimono Festival. Um, there will be a little article in the Wheel of Dharma this month about last year's event, but this year it'll be held on November 11th in Cortez, California, following a, serv a post-harvest service, which starts at 1030. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Sydney. That Tsukimono Festival sounds amazing, as does the rest of your history and background. Thank you for sharing. Uh, let's move on to the next person. Miharu. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Miharu Okamura. Um, I grew up going to the Oakland Buddhist Temple. Um, and I'm Yonsei. <laughs> Uh, I'm also a singer and songwriter. Uh, I've been songwriting for like like 14 years now, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, it's something that's really brought me like a lot of like creativity um, and like balance in my life. So I'm really grateful for that outlet. Um, I'm actually like in a another group with Nico Shudo, uh, and our group's called Koha. Um, our, we have some new music coming out pretty soon, so if you guys wanted to, like, follow, um, like, our social media on Instagram or Spotify or Apple Music, uh, feel free. Uh, very exciting uh, projects coming out, but uh, just so grateful to have the opportunity to be a part of this project, and, of course, Bombu Stories. Uh, Bombu Stories has also given me so much as far as, you know, as long as I've been in the group, so... I'm just really thankful for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Miharu. We will go on to Vicky. Hi, I'm Vicky. Um, uh, yeah, I'm Vicky Zhang. I grew up mostly in the Bay Area, California. I'm still living here. Um, I'm a first generation Chinese American Australian. Um, and yeah, I am a full-time engineer. Um, and within Bombo Stories, um, I, I yeah, I play taiko. I love I love like jamming on taiko and composing. Um, also love movement. Um, with taiko, so I think those are elements that I I love sharing with Bombo Stories and like having this outlet for creating and expressing just a very different kind of story. Um, and yeah, really. I just love every time we're together <laughs> and whatever we're doing, it's like, it's just really wholesome, beautiful place. <laughs> um, yeah. So full of gratitude um, and yeah, very excited to be sharing with all of you who are here listening as well. Thanks Vicky. Uh I don't know if Vicky mentioned this because my internet is going in and out a little bit, but she has the coolest name for her cat. Her cat's name is my cat game, like the mushroom, because it's the same color as mushroom. Right here. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, next, we have Kendall. <clears throat> Hi, um, I'm Kendall Tawny. Uh, I was born and raised in Mammoth Lakes slash Bishop, California in the Eastern Sierra. Um, and I'm a Yonsei, fourth generation. I did not grow up Buddhist, but I have family who goes to OCBC. Um, and I'm a sushi chef in my family's restaurant by day. Um, and then also a visual artist, a poet, and um, a budding spoken word artist, and also a taiko player. Um, when Sydney asked me to be a part of our first project, Ways of Being, I was like super excited because as someone who has like their own mental health journey, I'm really, uh, interested in having open mental health conversation and kind of breaking, uh, the stigma around things. Um, I also really enjoy hiking and backpacking and I'm in a really good place for that. And like Vicky, I also enjoy different kinds of movement and exploring storytelling through that um, and kind of experimenting in uh, Buto Japanese dance, which is also in a different project that we did. 
Uh, and I'm just really excited to be a part of this um, with BCA. I'm pretty honored to be a part of a project that has so much meaning to the community. So thank you. Thank you, Kendall. And thanks to all of you for sharing a little bit about your background. Um, what I was hoping to come out as part of this section of the program was to show all of you just the awesome kind of diversity that this group really brings. They're products of our community and they're also um, bringing their own experiences and their own background. So while the group Bombu Stories is amazing together, they're also really great individual artists and have accomplished so many awesome things. So um, for the next section, we wanna talk a little bit about the Lantern Song Project. So I wanna call up my fellow co-chairs um, of this of this subcommittee, uh, Chris Kubo and Tyler Moriguchi. Um, we had talked about creating this uh, celebration project for the 125th anniversary of uh, BCA. Uh, and Tyler actually came up with this amazing program idea where we would solicit a uh, solicit a uh, bonodori uh, creation. Uh, for the 125th anniversary. Um, Tyler, do you want to say anything about like where you got that idea and how it came to be? Sure. Uh, well, uh, one of my jobs is uh, a Bonodori instructor in Seattle. So I really enjoy uh, Bonodori. And so, you know, I, I just thought that, uh, yeah, you know, every so often the, the temples will come up with a song that kind of is representative of the JA experience. I mean, a lot of the songs we do are, you know, harken back to Japan, but you know, the, we have the songs that we've created. And so I thought it would be great if we create a new, a new song that represents where we are at the 125th anniversary year, you know, and um, I think it's great that, you know, we get new voices, new, uh, uh, the new the the new face of Buddhism right here in the United States presenting a song that's meaningful for them and and uh, you know I've had a privilege of hearing a little bit of the process of went into it but you know they they're talking about the things that Buddhism means to them in at 125 years so I think it's wonderful and then the song the dances represents have movements that are meaningful for them so I I really you know I thought Buddhism grows and evolves and so this is a perfect way to capture us at 125 years. Thanks, Tyler. That was great. And so Chris has worked with this group before and actually recommended Bombu Stories to be considered for the um, for the project. So Chris, do you want to talk a little bit about why you felt like Bombu Stories was a good fit for this particular project? Well, I had seen their work. I had seen them come together and work together to make this to make ways of being. And it was this beautiful process. It just touched our hearts so much for Dan and me. And um, so we've been, we've been like total fans of theirs for forever. And and they are to me, they are the embodiment of of Buddhist practice, of collaborating, of interdependence, of of having to to work with change you know, of, of impermanence and, um, and they're just a lovely group. And um, it's, they're, they're the kind of people, the next generation who, who gives us hope for, for the world, you know, so, um, and they have beautiful work. So I, I had I, this is when, when Tyler said, let's do a, a song, you know, a a one song and it's like yes and i know exactly who we can ask yay yay and um thank goodness they said yes yeah. so thank you so much <laughs> thank oh, you thank you chris um and i just also wanted to give a little bit more context for why we're launching this song right now so we had decided last year that we wanted to do this in celebration of the 125th anniversary so 125th anniversary of bc is happening in 2024 so we're launching this early because we want all of you to take these, to take this song back to your temples and and help us get this into the rotation for next year's Bonodori season. So, uh, you know, we're talking about the song itself, the creation process, and then 
following today's webinar, we'll provide you with the recording and the um, and the uh, the uh, the music for uh, the actual dance itself and the tutorial video as well. So you don't have to learn all of it today, but we did want to introduce the song to all of you and um, make a splash for the 125th. Um, so. Uh, with that, I want to turn it back over to the members of Bombu Stories to talk a little bit about their creative process. Okay, so yeah, um, despite Chris's uh, confidence in us uh, for this ask, I uh, don't know that that was <laughs> like a confidence that uh, our group had had right, right at the ask, but that hasn't stopped us before. <laughs> and so we knew that um, we, we wanted to try, but this was such a big ask and we're like, wow, we have not ever written an Obon song um, and didn't really know where to start. And so um, in our fashion of asking for help and reaching out to our community, uh, we immediately set up a, a, a Zoom session with Reverend Kodani, um, Nobuko Miyamoto and PJ and Roy Hirabayashi. Um, they all had experience like writing songs for Obon and creating new pieces and so we wanted to hear from them um, and see what advice they have for us um, and immediately uh, especially Nobuko definitely talked about her insecurities of being asked or, or perhaps told by Reverend Moss uh, to like to write um, the songs that she's written before um, and you know one thing that she said to us was that um, she this is her quote uh, we're all stumbling into this in a way and the fun is 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 the stumble um and so that kind of helped reframe and affirm to us that like we could do this you know like it doesn't have to sound exactly like our favorite obon songs it doesn't have to sound like tankubushi but um you know like it's it's an our offering and our voice and um our chance to like to tie in our voice with the sounds of obon that we love so much um, so this was an assurance that we didn't have to write in Japanese because we can't anyway, none of us really speak Japanese. Uh, and so that was the freedom to kind of be able to express um, our own style. And then uh, with Reverend Moss, he spoke a lot about um, about Obon really emphasizing uh, death, you know, and in Rev true Reverend Moss form, he said, um, it's morbid to think that death is morbid. <laughs> so, uh, and so that was uh, in his story um, about Ob Obon's perspective about Obon really helped us lean into this idea that it's not just a celebration, but really like a reflection. Um, and one story that really stuck out to, to us um, was that he talked, oops, is that right? okay. Sorry. Uh, he talked about like hanging up lanterns and this was just a few years ago. So, you know, he's has been a minister and been helping out Obon's for uh, decades but like that particular year he looked up and he realized that he knew all the names of everybody that was on the lanterns and so for him it was uh, a reminder that you know um, Obon is about reflection um, and this feelings of joy and sadness together and gratitude and when we thought about the 125th anniversary we wanted to reflect these feelings that it's you know it's um, the these this uh, feeling of gratitude for like the Nisei generation for working so hard to carry out an organization that has lasted so long, um, Issei generation as well. Uh, sadness because many of those folks who were there at the beginning of this organization have passed on. Um, we're grateful for their contributions and you know, we, we express joy for being able to practice and celebrate our culture and religion thanks to them. Um, and so, you know, also I think um, we're close to our 30s, like we're in our 30s, if not um, soon approaching. And so uh, many of us have experienced death um, in a more profound way recently than we ever have before. And so this was an opportunity to really lead into that. Um, so now I'm going to pass it to uh, Miko, who could talk about the different verses and the specifics in the song. Cool, thank you, Sydney. Well said. Um, so yeah, the lanterns obviously were huge inspiration for the song because we ended up calling it lantern song um another another like buddhist teaching that was influential in the in the lyrics um is this teaching that i learned from Thich Nhat Hanh about no birth no death um he kind of says you know a cloud never dies right like a cloud turns into rain rain turns into flowers, the trees, 
the rivers, the ocean, and then the ocean or, and all those things turn into a cloud again, right? And the cycle continues. So in that way, the cloud never dies, but rather transforms into different, uh, transforms or continues on, right? So like in the same way or in a similar way, our ancestors don't ever really die, right? They, they go back to the earth, maybe. They, their memories like live on through us, but also like in a literal sense, um, like I recognize like my, my beating heart is literally from like my mom and my dad and from my grandparents and so on. Um, so in that way, I, I always know like as long as my heart is beating, so is my mom, so is my grandma's, right? So I think that has given a lot of like uh, comfort to me in, in grief and in loss. And so we, we are hoping that this song would be a comfort to those who, who've lost someone um, that they love. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Um, what else? Um, and they just also wanted to show a few of these photos from their process of, uh, of creation and uh, over the last few months. So I think what we can do now is we'll show you guys the lyrics and we'll play the song. So. You wear the shirt I love Keeps you warmer when I need you in my arms This house I see Without you feels so big, so try to carry on, but I get in my own way, told me to be strong, now you're gone, and it pains me to look back, never thought I would hurt so bad, without you, you'd say, don't fret, don't worry, you're strong, you're tough, live your life, this beauty, it comes from us, be yourself, I promise it's enough. Take my hand 
That is the official, what would you call it? World, world premiere of Science World Pod. premiere. Woo! I know a few of us have heard it ahead of time, but that's the first time that we're like distributing, ooh, distributing it, showing it to all of you. Um, I love this song. I think it's so great. Um, I get emotional when I hear this song sometimes too. Sorry, I'm a little bit like verklempt at the moment, but um, because I think it to me it speaks to my generation and like memory remembering our ancestors and things like that. Oh my god, I was not expecting to get this emotional. Sorry, <laughs> but I'm wondering if um, what I love too is you guys have all these different uh uh. Uh, instruments in there. Do you want to talk a little bit about the other people who are featured and the musician friends that you brought in? Yeah. So, um, gosh, there is like a whole village who who put this song together. Um, so the instruments you're hearing were uh, arranged and produced, like recorded and everything by a friend of ours named Jake Abernathy. I went to school with him in Long Beach. He's super talented. Uh, he's just kind of the, one of those people that like, you say, I want it to sound like this. And then he gives you a first draft and it's just perfect. <laughs> There's like never any notes. Like he's, he's amazing. So shout out to Jake. Um, the koto that you hear on the track, a lot of you might know Emily Yoshihara or her married name is Emily Imazumi. Um, She's a founding member of our group um, and sh now she does kind of like guest um, performances with us. So we were super grateful to have her beautiful Koto on, on the piece. Um, let's see, the person who recorded um, us in their studio, his name is Miles Senzaki. He's based in Koreatown, but I think he's originally from the Bay Area, like San Francisco area. Um, he welcomed us with open arms and he was very patient and he just had this like really chill ease about him and, but we were really productive. Like we only had a few hours to get it done and he was just, he was amazing. He made us all feel really comfortable. Yeah, that's, that's his studio. Um, his studio is called Grandma's Dojo Studio. Um, he, I think he lives in the house where his, his grandma lived. And so he built the studio like on the property, uh, like from scratch, like all, all that stuff you see in the background, like he with his, you know, blood, sweat and tears, like built that studio. So we were kind of just like in awe and we kind of felt this like ancestral <laughs> feeling when, when we stepped into the, um, to the studio. So that was really cool. Uh, we had a choir. I don't know if you could really hear it on the recording just now, but we had a choir. Uh, the choir consisted of the Bombu Stories group, so the five of us, and we had Michael Murata. I think Michael's here in the in the meeting. Hello, Michael. He provided our uh, our male presence in the choir, and um, Lisa Horikawa or Lisa Orpilia. Um, she's based in Sacramento area. She sent in vocals um, remotely, so you could hear her in the choir as well. Um, yeah, I just want to shout out to the Bombay Stories people, though, because like, I think some of us are really nervous. We're like, what? What? Like, we're gonna record vocals? Like, what do you want us to do? But they really, um, they really like were were brave and and they followed um, they followed directions very well, and it was just so fun to to sing together. And to hear it all come together is really cool. Uh, also, shout out to Luke Ueda. Um, he's he's filming our he's filming and editing our music video for the song. So it's kind of like a one man one man crew there. Um, so eventually, when we share the music video, um, I think that'll be really exciting. But yeah, wanted to give him a shout out. And I was wondering too if you guys can talk a little bit about the vision for like the actual song itself. So I know when I listen to the song, it doesn't strike me as like a bonodori, but what really is a bonodori, right? Like, did you guys intend to write the song this way to speak from a particular, you know, perspective, or um, mm. like where did that come from? Do you think? Yeah. So. 
I think when we were asked to do this, um, we were just so grateful and we were just like very aware that like we are here because of what, you know, everyone who came before us has built for us. <laughs> um, you know, the community, all the sanghas, all the, like the, the, the greater BCA. So we kind of wanted it to be a conversation between like generations, um, kind of mm, like a conversation between like our generation, like talking to um, our, our past generations and like vice versa. So I think like maybe in the lyrics, yeah, you can see um, like the first two lyrics or first two verses, um, it's kind of like, we're in this like sad mood and we're kind of missing our loved ones. We have these things that remind us of them and we kind of lean into like the feelings of grief, right? We didn't, we, we didn't really want to shy away from talking about that. Um, Cause it's just a very natural part of, part of loss. Um, and then uh, we wanted also the, the voices of our ancestors to be included too. So like at the pre-chorus, like it says, you'd say, don't fret, don't worry, you know, um, that's kind of like our grandparents. I think Miharu, maybe you can share a little bit about that part. Um, Cause I think those, that, those were your lines. And I kind of, I kind of liked um, like how this, how specifically this part uh, you, you wrote, cause it was like so quick. Could you share Miharu? Sure. Um, yeah. For me, when approaching this project, I really wanted to like write something that was clearly written in 2023. Um, and like the way, um, the way maybe like we express like our feelings is like, can be like more direct. Like we can say like, I'm worried, I'm sad, like I'm depressed. And it's not like, oh my gosh, like you're talking about your feelings. It's like, okay, I hear you. I see you. I make space for you. Uh, so when talking about like that line, like you'd say, don't fret, don't worry. You're strong, you're tough, so on and so forth. Um, it's kind of like a inner, like it's something that someone who you's not here maybe would say to you, but also those are some like inner doubts that you have that make you insecure about losing somebody like they're not there to like physically like watch over you like physically comfort you but you trying and you existing and you putting effort into like what who you are and like what you put out into the world is like so important and it's always going to be enough regardless of how you feel about yourself in your current state so that's yeah I wrote that pretty quickly but it, it, all that stuff was in there you know <laughs> That's I awesome. think beautiful. I think you said too, Mihari, that like you're like that line specifically. Like I could literally hear my bachan like tell me those things, you know. So I thought yeah. that was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I lost my my bachan when I was really young. Not really young, like eighteen. And she was a big part of my life. She like helped raise me. And then when I got older, I like took care of her uh, partially. So here, even though she's passed like a long time ago. I feel like she's so with me still like she's so present and she's such a part of me so yeah yeah <laughs> that's yeah, awesome um, and I think you can really feel it in the song which is why it affects some of us like this um so with that let's get up and get moving I'm gonna turn it over to Nico and she's gonna teach us the moves to the um to the song and I promise it's not too hard. So if you are in a position where you're not driving or you're not, you know, doing something else, uh, please, you know, stand up and get the blood flowing a little bit. And let's follow Nico's steps uh, and learn the dance to lantern song. Uh, yeah, we can all stand. All right. So the first move, I'm going to be stepping with my right foot and we're kind of going to do kind of like a rock step. So I'm gonna go right, so forward, right, back, together. Okay, so that's our rock step. Right, back, together. And then we're gonna do um, 
step touch to the right, step, touch, step, touch again, step, touch, step, touch. Okay, so those are the first few steps with the feet. We'll do it one more time. Uh, starting rock step with right foot. Here we go, ready, and right back together. Step, touch, right, touch, left, touch, right, touch, left, touch. Okay, how are we doing? We ready for the arms? Okay, let's add the arms. Okay, so the arms are gonna go um, down and up. So here we can uh, raise our arms to the sky. We're kind of looking up with our eyes. We're looking up at the stars, at the lanterns, at the clouds, at the whatever. We're looking up and then we, we sway right and left, right and left. All right, let's try it together um, from the top. So down and up, ready and go. Down and up, we sway right and left, right and left. Cool, Ooh, I see people dancing, looks great you guys. All right, should we do that one more time and then maybe after that we can go on? Okay, cool. All right, from the top we're doing um, down and up, uh, feet are doing rock steps. Here we go, ready, and rock, step, arms up. We sway right and left, right and left. Okay, freeze here, we're, we're frozen after um, left touch, yeah? So um, I guess you could watch for the first time through this, this new move. We're gonna step forward with our right foot um, while turning 90 degrees to the left. Okay, so it's gonna look like this, forward, together. All right, so you can see my arms are coming, or so my, my hands are coming to my heart. Okay, so we just finished um, right touch, left touch. Let's try the walk forward together. So step forward, face left, and hands to heart. All right, let's go to uh, the sway. Let's go to the sway, we'll do the sway twice and then hands to heart. All right, here we go. Sway to the right, right, touch, left, touch, right, touch, left, touch, right, forward, hands to heart. Okay, should we try it with the counts from the top? All right, let's go from the top. So um, starting with the rock step. Okay, ready and go. Rock, step, arms up, we sway. Right, touch, left, touch, right, touch, left, touch, walk forward, hands to heart. Are we ready to go on or should we do it one more time? Okay, let's, let's go on, let's go on. So we're here, uh, we're facing to the left, hands to heart. We're gonna take a walk to the right while um, scooping our arms um, up to the side. So it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna start on my right foot. Right, left, right, and touch. Left, right, left, and touch. Okay, can we try that? Hands to heart, facing towards the left. And we walk to the right, ready, and go. Right, left right and touch, left, right, left and touch. Okay, I'm gonna go on, everyone's cool. Okay, so we finished our, our walks and we're here. Uh, we're gonna take our palm, our right palm and, and uh, point it towards the sky. Okay, so we're, we're here and we're gonna take a spin, okay? It's gonna be five steps, I think, in a circle. So you can watch first. I'm gonna go right, left, right, left, together, gosho and bow. Okay, can we try that together? So we just finished the walk to the left. 
uh, we, we flip our palm towards the sky and we spin. Here we go, right, left, right, left, together, gosh, and bow. Okay, let's try um, just like the second half, the second half, and then um, if we're ready, we can do the whole thing with counts. So how about we go from hands to heart and we're facing towards the left. Okay, so from here, we're gonna take a walk to the right. Here we go, right, left, right, touch, left, right, left, touch, palm up and walk, spin, gasho, and bow. Cool, 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 cool. Do we need that again? Or should we just go from the beginning? Oh, one more time, one more time. One more time from um, hands to heart, hands to heart. Okay, so let's take a walk to the right. Here we go, right, left, right, and touch, left, right, left, and touch, palm up, spin, gosho, and bow. And then from there, we start over. So uh, we go right into this. Rock step, arms up, arms down and up. All right. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Let's do gasho and then we'll start over. Gasho and bow, rock step. Right, back, together we sway. Right, touch, left, touch, right, touch, left, touch. Walk forward, hands to heart. Walk, right, left right and touch, left, right, left, palm up, spin, left, right, left, gosho, and bow. Here we go again, rock, step, arms up, we sway, sway again, right, touch, left, touch, hands to heart, we walk, right, left, right, and touch, left, right, Left palm up, spin, right, left, right, left, gasho, and back. Um, okay, here, here we go. Let's try it from the beginning. All right, rock step. Here we go. Rock step. Arms up, sway, right. Keeps me warmer when I right. need you. Left hand to heart. Arms. We walk. This house and I touch. see. Left. Without Palm you up, feel so spin. big, so Gosh, empty. Sure. I try arms to carry you, but I get in my own way. Hands Told to me heart. to be strong. We walk. Now you're gone. And it pains and me to look back and spin. Never thought I would hurt so bad Gosh, Without you You say Don't fret, don't worry, you're strong, you're tough Sweet. Live your life, there's beauty, it comes from us Be yourself, I promise it's enough So we dance, we dance, we dance, we dance, we dance, we dance, we will enjoy tonight And the loving company So we Yeah. 
everyone. So that is the Bono Dodi choreography for Lantern Song. Thank you all for dancing and for learning. This is so special. Yay, thank you, Miko. That was great. Yay. So everybody got it, right? We can also do it this <laughs> Yeah. And if okay. and if not, um, Miharu is working on a very in-depth tutorial video that we filmed at the JSC in Berkeley. Um, so we'll hopefully be sending that out to um, the temples maybe in a couple weeks. Yep. That sounds great. So uh, what I really liked about that is kind of maybe by the end I was stopping focusing on the movements and could actually like do the simple ones and listen to those songs at the same time. That was great. Because I think sometimes some of um, some dances, at least for me, are a little bit hard. <laughs> we focus so much on the movement that it's hard to um, that it's hard to listen to the song too. But this one was really mm. great, especially this section where you're just kind of like playing, like being at a concert. Um, <laughs> Yay. So we wanted to take some time and open it up to any audience questions that we've received or any that you guys have. Um, we have one that I have. Uh, what do you want people to take away from the song? And that can be for anybody, I guess from Bobo Stories. What's kind of like the key takeaways that you want people to get from the song or from the dance or from the movement? Mm. Sydney, you want to go for it? Okay, sure. I'll start this <laughs> off. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that similar to our other projects, like we, we, don't, we didn't really go in with a huge expectation of like how we want this to be received. I think, um, you know, like this, this song is, is our is our offering as a piece of art and so um you know I don't think I expect it to be like necessarily everyone's favorite Obon song I mean um and that's fine you know I think that what I what I would hope is that um people accept it as like uh as you know part of the um sound of Obon is like our Yonsei voice and our um you know uh this uh, voice of just this generation um and you know i i hope that people can enjoy dancing to it at least and that's why we tried to keep um the moves uh, as simple as possible and things that um that relate to the lyrics like looking up um and trying to uh allow for a lot of like person like personal touches right like um there is space in in the song if somebody wants to like jazz it up or put their own spin on it um we're hoping that that's an option uh so really like um really trying to promote a feeling of uh reflection um and you know uh gratitude that's a, like the gosho part um also like coming together and like uh it's, it's kind of hard to see like you know when we're doing it by ourselves but when we um come together put our hands on our heart we're facing into the circle um and so you know just yeah we, we kind of are hoping that that comes across but you know as if people receive it um that's you know as long as they receive it as like our offering that's all we ask for so <laughs> and i want to take this time to introduce uh kemi nakabayashi who's uh, been a huge part of this project as well as have been um, helping us through the entire process um, as our uh, music committee uh, chair person and um, Kemi has also graciously been <laughs> monitoring the chat for us. I don't know Kemi if you've received any questions from the audience that we could share. Oh I just put in the chat uh, encouraging them to ask um, questions that hopefully the team can answer a bit. Thank you, uh, Elise and the Bobo Stories creative team. It's amazing. And um, I, I recognize many of you that are participating uh, on this call today, but for some of you, um, I'm so glad that you joined and I wanna say a few words about BCA Music Committee. Um, we're a relatively new committee for BCA. We started only three years ago. And um, I reached out to some of these um, talented musicians because I really wanted to 
um, create a music committee that had not just geographic diversity, um, but um, representing the different generations um, of BCA. And um, so I'm so thrilled actually that we could offer you this Bonadotti Song and Dance Commission. Um, most people in BCA don't really realize, including myself, um, what, what happens to money that the BCA has? What happens when you are a member of a BCA temple and some of that money from your temple goes to BCA? And um, through the budgeting process that now our committee's gone through, um, we're working on the next fiscal year that begins next April. Um, we, we put in a budget request to BCA to fund this Bonadotti Song and Dance uh, Commission. And so we were uh, approved last budget cycle um, for this. Um, this. This is all new to us as BCA Music Committee. So we all, all really don't know what all the costs uh, are involved, um, but we did get a substantial um, starting um, sponsorship from the BCA operations budget. And then um, Music Committee also um, uh, has an endowment foundation account. And so we were committed to using some of the donations directed to our music committee uh, to support this project. So we could commit um, to the budget proposal for the creative team to get together for several work sessions and um, the expenses that associated with that in addition to supporting um, their creative work. And then the recording costs, um, we also had to um, fund through the BCA Music Committee, which we were happy to do so that we had this great sound recording. Um, BCA Music has really um, scrambled in different ways through the pandemic um, to present, record and present things. So we've done less sophisticated things like using acapella app or garage band, but we really want our big projects um, to have a professional um, sound quality and we're working um, towards producing um, things of this nature. So thanks to all of you. Um, if you didn't know it, you're all a part of this. And um, I, I'm i still looking in the chat, maybe somebody else can uh, do that if there are more questions because I, I do have some other things to say later on, but um, I wanna use this time right now for the Q and A. Uh, I think we did get one about uh, on the registration, where can people get the music? Um, and we will be posting links to those on the uh, BCA Music website, as well as on our YouTube channel. So again, like Tyler said at the beginning, um, this webinar was recorded. And then as uh, Miko said earlier, the uh, Bobo Stories team is working on a tutorial video, a very in-depth tutorial video. So. Um, all of you will have access to those materials. But if we have no more questions, maybe we can turn it over to Kemi for a closing remark. Thank you, everybody. So I'm going to take this opportunity to share with you um, our BCA music web page. Um, we do have um, on the BCA website and our own web page. Uh, so I'm taking you there on the share screen. And so we just uh, came up with our second issue of the BCA Music Newsletter. Um, this was in the works for three years and we finally got the first um, issue out uh, earlier this calendar year, uh, late January, February. And our second issue, so you see that it features Reverend Sugahara and actually Win Kiyama, who's on this call, um, because they were part of our original um, BCA music committee when we started three years ago. Reverend Sugahara was one of our ministerial advisors and uh, Win was co-chairing two of our subcommittees, Music History and uh, Bonadotti Taiko from their inception and um, continues to support the subcommittees. And so we wanted to take this opportunity. Amy Peterson wrote an article 
people about music at Oregon Buddhist Temple um, because Reverend Sugahara now is in Sacramento as Rimban there and Lynn has um, moved his family to Honolulu, so or Oahu, if that's where you are, Wynn. And so we wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge them and all the music that's going on uh, in Portland. And then um, they have we have um, also acknowledged um, donors. We did that in the first issue for the first two years of donations we received. And then from January 1 to July 1, um, and we have a box here that explains that anybody has the opportunity to support BCA music for our projects and a way to contact us um, for more specific information. Our plan for the 125th anniversary year is to um, come up with specific sponsorship um, things that we would like support for so that you would have opportunities to um, direct your donations to specific projects and be acknowledged for that. Um, but going back to the um, BCA Music webpage, um, the way that you can do online donations from the webpage, there is a giving box. And the giving box takes you to the BCA website giving page and when you donate today, it takes you to the BCA Kindful um, site and there's a drop down here and music is one of the choices. And then you can select music in your amount and you can do your one time or recurring donation. And we now have a special dedication box. So um, we've been fortunate to have some um, donations this year in memory uh, of certain family members um, or special um, temple people. Um, but you can put Bamboo Stories Project if you specifically would like your donation to the music committee to support um, further um, project needs. And this would be to support operational expenses beyond what we originally budgeted for the project, as well as a separate project proposal for this video that they, they've been um, speaking about. They did some of the videography during their work sessions in Southern California and at the uh, GSC. And um, you may have um, seen the call out for um, Bonadotti videos um, to uh, people and uh, incorporating the BCA um, Bonadotti's into this promotion video. So um, that's to come. And so that funding for the video, uh, promotional video, um, is actually a separate project that we're um, looking for funding for. So um, thank you all for joining. And um, I would like to do my round of thank yous. Um, I, you know, BCA Music is the monster committee. We're the largest committee in BCA. The Bonadotti Taiko subcommittee is a really strong committee with their own uh, internal leadership. So thank you to Elise Fujimoto and Tyler Moriguchi and Christine Kubo for being the co-chairs uh, of the Bonadotti Taiko Subcommittee, Lynn Kiyama, as I mentioned, who started the committee and others on this call. Um, then we have other people in other music subcommittees also joining today and I thank you all. Um, thank you to the Bumble Stories um, group. Wow, you're such a talented and an articulate group and I, I'm so happy that um, this ha project has come together and um, we've been able to give you this opportunity and thank you for sharing uh, during the webinar today. It's really exciting. Um, I think uh, it's a wonderful start to introducing the new song and dance. And then acknowledging uh, Koichi Mizushima who's helped um, with as co-host as part of the CBE for this program and Susan, you and I believe you're here um, from Tyco Ventures because uh, Tyco Ventures has been an integral part uh, of the project as well in terms of uh, helping to uh, organize all the nitty gritty uh, details for the Bumbu Stories group. Um, Elise, did I get everybody on my thank yous? Yes, I believe so. Thank you, Kelly, too, for all of your leadership and all of your help through this process. Uh, are there any additional announcements, 
comments? Jamie, I just, I think we should also uh, thank uh, Bishop Harada, who uh, provided a lot of support for the beginning of the music committee and, and this whole endeavor. Yes, thank you. Bishop Harada um, in 2020 asked uh, to form this music committee. Um, I agreed to co-chair, or I agreed to chair this committee. Um, my vice chair is Nadana Sasaki, who's on the call. Uh, the Northwest District um, was asked to, uh, I, I formed the music committee with the support of the Northwest District, but now we have um, members of the committee from across uh, all eight BCA districts. And I appreciate everybody's support. Thank you. If there's nothing further, are we ready for closing, Gosho? I think so, yeah. Put your hands together. Thank you all for coming. Namu Amida Butsu. Namu Amida Butsu. Namu Amida Butsu. Thank you everyone for coming and attending and thank you Bombu Stories for sharing all of your background and expertise and uh, for creating this beautiful composition, this beautiful dance for us. We'll have the recording ready for all of you in about a week or two and we'll distribute it to the list and uh, we'll also post it on our website and on our YouTube channel. So thanks everybody. Enjoy tonight and the loving company. So we dance, we sing. We'll enjoy tonight and cherish the memory.